Hey guys, it's Lily. Today, <laughs> today I'm going to be talking about the carnivore diet. So I researched um, how many different things. I think I looked at three different journals, three published reviewed journals. And I looked at the carnivore diet. I looked at how it affects weight loss and metabolism, your cholesterol, heart disease risk, gut health, microbiome changes, vitamins and minerals, and terms of what you miss versus what you get more of. And I also looked at the cost and sustainability of the carnivore diet. Um, so let's talk about it. <laughs> Anyways, if you didn't already know, the carnivore diet um, is supposed to be just animal products, typically as like a blanket what it is, animal products. Um, a 2021 survey shows that many self-described carnivore dieters eat red meat daily with very little to no fruits, vegetables, grains, or regular plant foods. Some also consume organ meats and non-milk dairy, like cheese and dairy pro and other dairy products, but a minority use vitamin supplements. In 2024, a modeling study shows that carnivore diet is often conceptualized as primarily ruminant meat and fat, with optional inclusion of eggs, organ meat, bone broth, marrow, fermented dairy, and in some cases, small amounts of pork, chicken, or fish. So I'm going to put this on the screen, but I'm also going to read it. One of the, I just made a one day of a carnivore diet just to like see what the price of it would actually be, because it sounds expensive when you, I mean, generally speaking, at least for me, I view meats as the more expensive thing but that might just be because i usually buy in bulk um so for a typical carnivore diet i looked at what different people kind of eat on different meals and i had found breakfast was really popular with eggs and butter makes sense lunch i just put in an eight ounce thing of ground beef you could pan fry it it could be ground beef or some cut of meat, but for calories, I did do it as 80-20, um, as like a snack or midday lunch to large eggs, and then you could add salt and butter or more calories for the butter. Um, dinner, an eight ounce ribeye steak, which is roughly 700 to 750 calories. Hey guys, it's Lily. Today, <laughs> today I'm going to be talking about the carnivore diet. So I researched um how many different things i think i looked at three different journals three published reviewed journals and i looked at the carnivore diet i looked at how it affects weight loss and metabolism your cholesterol heart disease risk gut health microbiome changes vitamins and minerals in terms of what you miss versus what you get more of and i also looked at the cost and sustainability of the carnivore diet um, so let's talk about it. <laughs> Anyways, if you didn't already know, the carnivore diet, um, is supposed to be just animal products, typically as like a blanket, what it is, animal products. Um, a 2021 survey shows that many self-described carnivore dieters eat red meat daily with very little to no fruits, vegetables, grains, or regular plant foods. Some also consume organ meats and non-milk dairy, like cheese and dairy pro and other dairy products, but a minority use vitamin supplements. In 2024, a modeling study shows that carnivore diet is often conceptualized as primarily ruminant meat and fat, with optional inclusion of eggs, organ meat, bone broth, marrow, fermented dairy, and in some cases, small amounts of pork, chicken, or fish. So I'm going to put this on the screen, but I'm also going to read it. One of the, I just made a one day of a carnivore diet just to like see what the price of it would actually be, because it sounds expensive when you, I mean, generally speaking, at least for me, I view meats as the more expensive thing but that might just be because i usually buy in bulk um so for a typical carnivore diet i looked at what different people kind of eat on different meals and i had found breakfast was really popular with eggs and butter 
makes sense. Lunch, I just put in an eight ounce thing of ground beef. You could pan fry it. It could be ground beef or some cut of meat. But for calories, I did do it as 80-20. Um, as like a snack or midday lunch to large eggs. And then you could add salt and butter or more calories for the butter. Um, dinner, an eight ounce ribeye steak, which is roughly 700 to 750 calories. And if you wanted to include more micronutrients in the food you're actually eating, um, that would be where the organ meat would come in or... If you wanted to include, if you wanted to include more micronutrients, um, I also put in an optional 100 calories of organ meat. All of this, I totaled it somewhere. Oh, okay. This all comes out to 1800. Get my tongue up. Get my tongue break. Still talking about the risk and downside. Digestive and gut health concerns are also frequently brought up because the absence of fiber may impair your gut microbiome health, which can increase constipation or other GI issues. And long-term consequences into this are unknown. There haven't been any long-term studies on multiple subjects to support or disprove the GI issue concern when it comes to the card when it comes to a carnivore diet. Um what we don't know yet is the long-term effects of a carnivore diet on the cardiovascular health, cancer risk, bone health, kidney health. Due to the lack of long-term studies, um, we just don't have anybody who's done the car. car too many car words. <laughs> we don't have enough people who have done carnivore diets long enough and pure enough to have studied their health before and after. Whereas when I did the vegan video, there were plenty of people since the 70s, 60s who have been vegetarian, vegan for whatever reason. And so obviously we can study their health as it develops. Um, in that video, I talked about how supported by decades of research, including large cohorts like Epic Oxford and Adventist health studies, benefits of the vegan diet include a lower BMI, lower LDL cholesterol, lower rates of isometric heart disease, lower blood pressure, lower risk of type 2 diabetes, and a higher intake of fiber, antioxidants, and phytonutrients. However, there were concerns of a B12 deficiency, which most take supplements for, and possible low iodine, iron, calcium, and omega-3s. There was a slightly increased risk of hemorrhagic, hemorrhagic stroke in some cohorts, though the reason for that's not necessarily clear. Um, it could have been coincidence. Um, I'm going to directly compare vegan to carnivore diet just because they are polar opposites, right? So when you look at vegan, they are typically high in fiber, vitamin C, folate, potassium, magnesium, and antioxidants and phytonutrients. While they can be, there can be adequate protein sources in lentils, tofu, seishin, beans, and vegan protein powders. However, vegans also are low in vitamin B12, vitamin D, iodine, omega-3, iron, zinc, and calcium. Whereas the carnivore diet is automatically high in protein, B vitamins, heme iron, zinc, creatine, omega-3, and fat-soluble vitamins if the organ meats are eaten because that carries a lot of micronutrients. However, carnivore diets usually lack vitamin C, fiber, magnesium, folate, potassium, phytonutrients, they have no phytonutrients, vitamin K1, and magnesium, and electrolytes can be unstable depending on what you're eating. So the vegan diet, like I just said, is has strong evidence supporting what you need to do to do it properly with decades of studies. Hey guys, it's Lily. Today, <laughs> today I'm going to be talking about the, the vegan. She is, the dog is chewing on a bone. So if y'all can hear that, I'm going to leave this in. I apologize. <laughs> the vegan diet um, has proven studies to lower heart disease, but it might increase your risk of hemorrhagic stroke. Um, whereas the carnivore diet automatically has a higher LDL and the long-term effects of it on your heart are unknown. Um, vegan diets typically are a lower chance for diabetes, whereas carnivore diet actually has a short-term improvement, which is very common to see a short-term improvement in your risk for diabetes. Um, and the vegan diet is very fiber-rich, so it supports your microbiome and you have a healthy gut, 
but the carnivore diet has no fiber. So we don't actually know it having no fiber leads people to believe you would have an unhealthy microbiome, but there's no science to prove that. Vegan diet has been proven to lower cancer risk, whereas the carnivore diet, being that it's high in red meat, processed meat, it's usually associated with cancer. Um, weight loss is very effective for both of them, except for long-term carnivore diet. Short-term carnivore diet, great for weight loss. Long-term, we don't know. They both require supplements and being aware of your micronutrients. Hey guys, it's Lily today. Um, I personally would not do the carnivore diet because I like my fruits. I really enjoy berries. So just like my go-to like little snack thing. Anyway, so the red meat was interesting though. I don't think I realized that red meat was the main source of the carnivore diet. Like I knew it was obviously meat, but I grew up with my mom had a heart attack when I was 10 and straight out of the heart attack, they were like no red meat, very low sodium. Obviously like a heart healthy meals are very, usually very plain <laughs> and no red meat. So I grew up associating red meat with a risk. And I also at some point learned that our bodies don't necessarily digest red meat the same. And I was like, okay, so I should really only be having red meat maybe once a month. And so I did that for a while. And then find out people, the carnivore diets focus on red meat. As well as I saw someone say that since they started eating red meat every day, their monthly cycles had balanced. And I was like, that's interesting. Um, so I don't know, maybe it's all up to your own. Obviously, we know red meat is typically higher and fat, which can increase your LDL cholesterol, which of course would then correlate to don't have that if you are at risk for heart problems. Um, but it sounds like it could also be good for other things, which makes sense. I try not to demonize blanket statement, any type of food. So I guess I should open myself back up to a little more red meat. Um, <laughs> I don't know. There was someone in my comments on the vegan video talking about them doing the carnivore diet. Um, I really hope they get a chance to look at this because I want to know their thoughts. If you, if someone else, not that person who commented, if someone else um, has done the carnivore diet or is thinking of the carnivore diet, what do you think? I'm really interested to talk about this some more. Till next time. Bye. <laughs>